Welcome back to Definitely Not Definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. And we're just a preposterous couple in love Ooh. that's always prepared to cry. Preposterous. <laughs> yes. I mean, it works. And so we're checking out uh, another body video for Prepare to Cry from Dark Souls. This is uh, Solaire and the Sun. Um, if you want all of our Dark Souls reactions, Prepare to Cry, From Software Games reactions, check out the description of this video because we got a playlist there for you. Got links to our Patreon, get early ad-free access to our videos. Lots of goodies down there for you. I really feel like in part, I should have a box of Kleenex next to me. One of these Prepare to Cry, prepare to cry videos, I definitely ugly cry. <laughs> the other one, I held it together and I didn't cry. So like, I, I don't know what you're It's crack. a coin toss, we'll see what happens. But I feel like I should have Kleenex. It's all right, you can use my sleeve. I'll use, I'll, I'll use Bucky, he's white, so I'll just like. <laughs> please fine. do, please do. He's asleep in my If you start lap. to cry, just grab Bucky and just wipe him <laughs> on your eyes. That would be hilarious. Okay, yeah, are you ready? thrilled, yeah. It's not easy to find the sun in Lordran. And when you do see it, who's to say it's real? The age of fire is ending, and the world is already dark. And full of terror. <laughs> Logan believes that there are no gods, no transcendence, only power. To become a god is simply to find that power. The lords found their powers amongst the first flame and proclaimed themselves to be gods. But as the flame fades, the lords must rely on illusions instead of power until new fuel for the flame is found. As Gwyn burns in his tomb, Gwyndolin and Frampt search desperately for someone to replace him to maintain their age of light a little longer. So there reminds me of the legend of Icarus. Icarus ah. is granted wings and uses them to chase the sun, but he flies too close and falls to his death. Solaire has limitless ambition and strives to obtain the sun as well, but he too runs the risk of flying too close. It's hard to find the sun in Lordran, and the world is already dark. In full terror. Perhaps Solaire is looking for a new light. There is a prophecy that comes from Solaire's homeland in Astora. A prophecy that sheds light on Solaire's quest. There is an old saying in my family. Thou who art undead art chosen. In thine exodus from the undead asylum, maketh pilgrimage to the land of ancient lords. When thou ringeth the bell of awakening, the fate of the undead thou shalt know. To fulfill the prophecy, you must be two things. You must be undead, and you must escape the asylum. Oh! Oscar became undead, and traveled to the asylum to become a part of the prophecy. You carry out his legacy. But Oscar was not the only one trying to become a part of the prophecy. Solaire also escaped the asylum. The way I see it, our fates appear to be intertwined, both undead, both imprisoned in the asylum, and now we both end up here, in a land brimming with hollows. Could that really be mere chance? I hardly think so. I became undead to pursue this. Soler's quest meant so much that he chose to become undead to fit the prophecy. So if you believe that you are the chosen undead, then you and Soler are on the same path, and your meeting was not chance, but fate. You can choose to believe that everything in your past led you here. But who was Solaire before he became undead and met you? Gwyn, Lord of Sunlight, had three children. One was named Guinevere, who fled her father and Anne Orlando as the flame continued to fade. Another was Gwyndolin, born of the moon and raised as a daughter. Master of Illusion, he maintains power in an Orlando through an illusion of his sister and a fake son. The identity of the third child is a mystery. All we know is that he was a god of war, but his foolishness led to the loss of Kratos? valuable, and he had his god status rescinded. Statues were destroyed, and there are places where it is clear that there have been obvious efforts to remove all trace of him ever existing. But in a land far from an Orlando, Near an altar dedicated to sunlight, there is one statue that remains. It's the statue of a woman holding a small child, a child wielding a sunlight straight sword. The same sword as Solaire. Solaire never talks of the past, only of the future. 
only of finding his son. If he is the son of Gwyn, then he has fallen out of his father's graces. But who is Gwyn to take his powers away? Solaire would have lost his status, and nothing more. Even though his equipment has no special powers, he travels through Lordran with little trouble, reaching Anolondo, Demon's Ruins, and Lost Isleth before you. It is said that the god Ooh, of the world is over his warriors. Solaire crosses between worlds to help you take down your foes. Hmm. Cool. Mm-hmm. Nice armor. In the end, it doesn't matter if Solaire is the son of Gwyn. To the world, he's simply a friendly man who helps his comrades when they are in need. He is a man who gave everything he had to find something, despite looking like a fool. But after years of searching, his hope turns to despair. And his despair turns to madness. Lighting bolts. Yeah. Big ones too. It's okay, he's got a very long sword. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he'd probably just like stand at the top of the stairs and just like swipe it all. Just like, shh, shh. <laughs> Back off. Poke, poke. Okay, that just sounds dirty. Right? It sounded like he like really enjoyed getting stabbed right there. Yeah. <sighs> oh, thanks for killing me. I just I wonder about the act in the voiceover booth for the <laughs> dark. So dark. Soleil, a man of indomitable will, loses his mind to a creature that looks like the sun and dies to your blade. Or does he? Time in Lordran is convoluted, and one undead may take a different path. A path that lets Solaire persist a little longer. Get those bugs. Mm -hmm. A path that takes you both to the kiln of the first flame, where Solaire can fight for his son. That looks like Sauron. Mm -hmm. Yep, drink that potion. I was still there. In the butt. In the butt. Go for the Achilles heel. When you're <laughs> behind him, like, there you go. Yeah. That's your one and done. I'm just not walking anymore. Big ass flame sword. Slayer's holding his own, just taking a beating while you're there drinking potions. I mean, he's made of the sun, so like he's kind of already made of flame. Mm -hmm. I wonder if a flame sure. sword. Uh oh. Ooh, but that's gonna hurt. Yeah. That's gonna hurt. In the butt. More in the butt. <laughs> you cannot hurt my friend. I will hit you in the butt. <laughs> a lot. The definition of butt hurt. <laughs> Oh, Solaire just stabbed him in the butt. Yeah, see? Tag team. If he's not hitting you in the butt, I am. Boom. 
Carry you Arthur. Grave. Grab the sword. Wind defeated, Soler can light a flame of his own and return sunlight to the world. For the fire within Soler will burn the brightest of all. That just looks painful. Mm. I regret everything. Yeah, right. I held it together. Yay! <laughs> For me, like this one, actually, like I was thinking a lot of Vadi more than I was of the story a lot, like when watching mm. this, because I'm just like, wow, like. You know, it's an older one of his uh, videos and just like seeing some of his newer stuff and like seeing how much more comfortable he's he's gotten uh, in in narrating his videos. And like, like in this one, it felt very much like I need to give this weight. So I need to speak softer and like in a certain kind of tone and voice to like, so like, you know, people can really get the weight of uh, uh, of this of this issue. Whereas like before, it's like he's got such a great voice for narration just to begin with. And so in his like newer videos, it just like, you know, he's, he is, uh, it just seems like more, more, more comfortable. And when, when he's, when he's narrating and everything like that, like he is giving weight to it, but not without trying to, without seeing like, like I need to have this kind of voice, this kind of tone, this kind of pace in order to uh, elicit a certain emotion, like, and like, and, like, and, and, uh, and, Get across, gravitas? yeah, gravitas, and get across what I'm trying to say. Um, that's kind of like what I felt in, in in this one, like like versus like his his newer stuff, where I'm just like, okay, like he's found his he's found his groove, and like he kind of just trusts in the storytelling, in the story that he's telling, that it will come across rather than having to like give it a certain voice or tone. Yes, I didn't necessarily realize at first in this as I was watching it, like I, it didn't, I didn't think of it as. He was trying, but as we were talking, the thing that came to mind was like, oh, well, in his newer stuff, he's not trying. Yeah, exactly. And, and that was the thing is like, it comes off the cuff in his newer stuff because he has a great voice for narration. So like, mm -hmm. he doesn't need to put anything on it. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. There. The thing I really liked about this was as he opens it, he talks about choose to believe. And mm -hmm. I thought that was such a great way to open it out. Like they believed or it was told or it was fact, but choose to believe is such a better way of describing it because there are things nowadays that we all choose to believe. I mean, religion True. in and of itself is something you choose to believe. There's no fact-based evidence. It is a leap of faith. You are believing mm -hmm. in this thing. You have faith. That's the whole point of it. Um, and so I love the fact that you talked about choosing to believe in this thing because as an audience member, I'm sitting there I'm sitting here thinking like, yeah, like how many things do we all choose to believe in versus things that we actually know to be true? And then as a society, how many things do we know to be true? <laughs> they were just like, I'm gonna choose not to believe that. Like that's just inconvenient for me right now. But I mean, that's one of those things that's like that choose to believe phrase encompasses so much. And I just thought it was such a brilliant choice of words that even in some of Adi's earlier things, maybe while he was finding his voice, he certainly had his words yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm saying like, like that, and, but like, I then I th feel like he trusted the words more and the words to tell, to tell the story and like, you know, and, uh, and whatnot. And so, yeah, it was just an interesting look at, uh, at, at his, at his videos. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, and and Solaire, like it wasn't necessarily like a, a cry uh, video as far as it, but I like that you know he was always helping out. Like if you yeah. weren't gonna stab the bad guy in the butt, he was there to help you out and stab the stab guy in the butt. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah Solaire's story. I feel bad because I was sitting here thinking more about body and and the the rollout of the story and the framing of the story than I was actually falling into the story itself. Mm, yeah. Um, so for Solaire, first of all, I thought he looked 
freaking cool. Yeah. His his whole design was amazing because he he looks like the sun. He looks like he's glowing with heat from the inside. Mm. I mean, it's very well done. And him being a help to us is a wonderful benefit. Yeah. But I realized as we got to the end, I was like, why was I gonna cry in this? <laughs> And then I wondered, like, did I miss not yeah. listen? Did I was I was I thinking too much of like, God, choose to believe was such freaking brilliant. I was like, was I thinking too much about what the script was or how the story was unfolding rather than the story itself? And so I don't understand why I Happens. was supposed to cry. But I mean, trust me, other videos of his, I've known I was gonna cry, and I have. Um, so it's it's no like mark on body. It could just be the the mental space I'm in right now, and I was I was more thinking about the creator than I was mm. the story. Um, but we got to the end, and I was like, that wasn't so bad. <laughs> I'm okay. That was kind of a happy story. No, <laughs> well, I, I don't know if we go that far. But I was like, I was okay. I mean, yeah. Solaris Solaris on your side, and he's cool, hmm. and he's of the sun, so nice. This just keeps my streak alive of seeing someone lit on fire and never crying. Oh my god. <laughs> so, oh, that's awful. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> too late, too late. I already, I already said it. I already said it. It's there. Anyways, let us know what you thought about this down below in the comments. If you want all of our reactions for uh, Prepare to Cry and Elden Ring and From Software Games, uh, and check Vati. out and Vadi, yeah, check out the description of this video. We got a playlist there for you, um, as well as links to our Patreon. You can get early ad free access to our reactions. Thanks so much for checking out our reaction for Avadi's video on Prepare to Cry, Dark Souls, uh, Solaire in the Sun, which you keep in mind. That our reaction is definitely not definitive.